Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I thought I would do a very quick overview of this new set of jelly gouache. I just finished a painting with it and I finished a swatch with it last week. And um, I have reviewed the Mia Himi gouache in the past and this is what it looks like. It's the, the Himi gouache that we all know and love. And about a month or two ago, they came out with a twin cup set, which instead of having um, a cup with one color in it, if you look at these cups, they actually are divided and there's two colors per cup. So instead of a cup of 30 ml paint, you probably have two cups of maybe, I was thinking it was 15 ml, but maybe it's more like 12 or 13 ml paint. So it's it's gotta be a little bit less because you do have a void in there and the other cups would have been filled up all the way. Um, we have 36 colors in this set. I do know they make a 48 color set. And uh, this is the little color swatch that they offer you in the box. And then um, I made a swatch too and I did a swipe of black marker so I'd be able to see what was opaque and what was transparent. So the Himmy Gouache is probably the most popular jelly cup gouache brand that there's out there. They're definitely the first ones I ever heard of. And I believe they make their gouache, I think Artix uses that same gouache for their jelly cup style gouache and they are probably making other brands gouache as well or they're all having them made from the same place I would say but I will say that um, there's a brand called Anagani jelly cup gouache, I prefer that brand over the Himi just in general although they are bigger sets and you know full full cups not half cups but um, I just want to go on the record saying that I know I mentioned it before but maybe you're catching this video and you've never seen any of my other reviews. That said though, I think that they're, I think they're decent. Um, this is the painting I just did with it. I didn't have any issues with the gouache. I will say though, the more I've been using professional gouache regularly, the more I am noticing more of a difference between the student grade jelly gouache and the professional grade gouache. But I think just go for the format you like the most and it's most useful for you. Cause I don't think the difference is that huge unless you are wanting to hang up your work and um, expose it to light and you want to make sure it doesn't fade. Then you would want to buy professional gouache or designer's gouache, but you want to see what the pigments are used and check the light fastness because there's going to be fugitive pigments no matter what. Um, I'm sure there are people online that have done light fast tests on the Hemi gouache. If that's something that you're interested in, I would just Google light fast test Hemi gouache. What I reckon the trouble will be will be like with the reds and the pinks and the purples. Um, let's just take a look at the hand painted swatch. For opacity, um, our reds are very transparent. Um, the yellows are pretty transparent. Some of the greens and blues are transparent. The purples are quite opaque. Pink's opaque. The browns are opaque. And the white, um, there's two whites. One is a little bit more opaque than the other, it seems like. Um, we have titanium white and white. And I'm not sure which one is which, but titanium white usually is your more opaque one. Uh, it's hard to tell when you flip them around to know what is what. But um, it's a pretty good assortment of colors. I find that I prefer to have like a small set of gouache from, you know, just like a, a little more limited palette personally. When I did this painting, the colors I used were Prussian blue. I used uh, this violet, then I used this pastel violet and the pink, and I used that kind of orangey yellow, and I used black and white. So um, even within this big assortment of colors, I still kept it pretty, pretty minimal. Now, uh, this kit comes with three brushes, which, and the brushes were good. They're, they're a nylon bristle, and the sizes are actually quite useful too, which is nice because oftentimes you'll get either like bristle brushes, which I don't think work that great with wash personally, or you'll get um, br brushes like a bunch of rounds. And I find that flats and filberts work, work much better with gouache. So a flat brush is just this one looks like a squared off brush. A filbert is a, like a flat brush with a rounded tip. And then it does have a, uh, a round. I do use some rounds, but I definitely use way more flats and filberts when I'm working in gouache because it pushes the paint around a little bit better. Um, these thinned fine with water to do like the background washes. I didn't have any any real issues there. I was using kind of pastel colors thinned down, so um, you know, it could get a little streaky, but honestly it dried nice and flat and matte and no issues. These brush bristles stain, but that's not, that's just because they're white nylon bristles, they always stain. And the palette that comes with a kit also stains. But one thing I liked about this, because I've had a other Hemi palettes where the palette is actually the color of the box, and um, this one, the palette is white. And I really like that because it's easier to mix on white than if you have a yellow or a mint green or a pink palette. It does stain, and I did use a magic eraser just to see if I could get the stains up, and they did not budge with a magic eraser. So just, you know, as long as you're okay with your palette staining and your brushes staining, 
I mean, I, that wouldn't prevent me from using a kit like this. I'm just glad it's, I want my palette either white or gray if it's an opaque media because it's easy to mix on. And then we have a lid. Now the lid doesn't have a gasket in it or anything. So one issue with the uh, the Hemi gouaches that um, that I don't have with the Anagani gouache because the Anagani gouache has like a foam, uh, like a foam insert, and it makes a mess. I mean, it's it's a messy. This is a messy situation unless you like are very careful. Um, but with the with the Anagani gouache, it's got a foam insert so when you push it down it kind of squishes around the cup so when you pull it up sometimes the cups stick and you do get the paint on there but I feel like it keeps it um I feel like it keeps it moist and usable longer I let one of my Hemi sets completely dry out and I just used them I just wet my brush and used them from dry and um that made them even more transparent so like this swatch here uh, all of them would be like transparent like those if you do that. It still works fine. It's just up to you But I wanted to do that because it was so messy to deal with uh, I ended up reconstituting it just again to see if I could and I could um, But one thing I would recommend is that before you put this away if you're not going to use it for a while Take some alcohol Actually, do I have any alcohol right here? Hmm. Yes, I do um, I would mix some alcohol water and glycerin together in a spray bottle I don't have that handy, but so I'm just gonna spray with alcohol spray with some um, like distilled water, something that doesn't have any bacteria in it, and then if you want, you can give them all a stir. I'm not gonna bother with that, but that way you'll just kinda keep a little bit of moisture in there and help it from uh, from drying out. And I use the alcohol and the distilled water because I don't wanna encourage any mold growth. But um, yeah, I've never had an issue with mold in my jelly gouache. Some people have. I haven't. I don't know if it's because I live in a cold climate and my studio's in the basement, so it's never that hot down here. Like the warmest it gets would be middle of the summer and we might have 65 in the basement. It's never hot. So that could be why. Um, and because I have well water, it's not like I have city water or anything, but I do use, actually, it's not even distilled water. It's water, like when I have water left over in the tea kettle, I just pour it in my spray bottle. So uh, to close this up, these all come sealed. You have to peel off the seals. That takes a while and it will totally trash your nails. But um, you peel off all the cups, the seals on the cups, and you're ready to go. So to close it up, I what I like to do is put the palette uh, mixing side down. So if paint does, because paint's going to get on there. Well, oh wow, it didn't. Uh, paint's probably going to get on there. So I like to have that mixing side down. So I'm not going to get this part that's on my table all gross. And then you put this lid on top and... It will lock down on all four sides. If you find it not locking right, then um, uh, then you want to um, turn it around. Just try sealing it the other way. You might just be a little wonky. Now this says bright colors, safe and non-toxic, waterproof, high light resistance. So that would mean they did. They say it's not going to fade. I, honestly, I would believe bright colors and safe and non-toxic. I mean, I don't eat my paints because I assume they're all toxic. Uh, waterproof, let's just see about that. Gouache is not supposed to be waterproof. Gouache, like design gouache, regular gouache, unless it says acryl gouache, is supposed to be liftable. So let's just try on the swatch to, um, this is an old Hemi brush <laughs> from another set. Let's see how, how these lift. This is like a week after I've swatched them. So let's see. Yeah, they're not waterproof. They're not supposed to be waterproof. What are you talking about, Hemi gouache? Maybe they mean the package. Maybe they mean the case is waterproof. Again, I'm not going to trust it because there's no gasket. There's no seal in this in the in that cap. So I would not trust that to be waterproof either. So I don't know. Maybe they're just putting English words on the case. These are made in China. So yeah, there's like there's no seal in there. There's no gasket. So this case would not be waterproof. If you plop that in your bathtub full of water, you would end up with rainbow soup or mud when you were done because that's not gonna... Oh, see what I told you about it not like latching sometimes? So sometimes you have to like flip it around and also make sure your palette is there. And actually, some people like to put saran wrap, plastic wrap on their case before they close it up like and kind of press it down onto the paint. You could do that. Um, or maybe you don't want to keep your, your palette in here because you don't like the palette getting all messy. You want to like, I don't know, put it on top of the box and put a rubber band. That's totally fine. Um, I don't think you need to swatch these in order to use them because what you see is what you get with gouache. It may shift a little bit as it dries. Like your uh, darker colors might shift a little bit lighter and your light colors might shift a little bit darker. But honestly, I don't find much of a drying shift with these guys. I, I think they're, what you see is what you get. You can trust the colors pretty well because of the opacifiers in them. It does give you a pretty, uh, 
a, a pretty good idea of what the color is going to be. Um, and you've got the big open pots of color, so you can see what you have. Uh, so you don't need to, but I thought I would anyway, just so we could see that a lot of these colors are going to be quite transparent. But if you're working on white paper, it's not really that big of a deal. If you're working on toned paper, it's probably fine. If you're going to work on black, that might give you some issues. You might need to mix some white with those colors, and then you're going to you're going to lose some of that saturation. You're going to end up with more pastel colors. I did see that Himi is down now out with a pastel set, but um, you know you can always just take the color and add white. Unless you're going through gobs and gobs of white because you use pastels so much, I, I don't know if that would be really that big of a selling point. Although pastels are just really popular right now, and um, and this is an aesthetic art supply. This is an art supply that's cute. It's um, it's interesting. It's novel. It's new. Our brains love that new novel artsy goodness, don't they? <laughs> don't they? I know I was intrigued when I first saw those, and then a few people asked me about them, and then the company Artsy reached out to me and asked if I would like to try it out. Uh, so I said yes because a few people had asked me. Although when I did my big review preview video, uh, I don't think anyone requested these to be reviewed. So uh, when compared with all the other artist grade stuff I got in, um, I purchased a review during Black Friday. These didn't didn't make the cut. So I, but I still thought I would do a just a quick little overview because I know some people are curious about it. Um, I pr much prefer a smaller compact set like this to the um, the really big like 50 48 50 set gouaches that are that take up that would take up almost as much space is this big mat that I have just because it's more convenient to have this little this little set and if you are um, maybe you just want some gouache to work in a sketchbook or you're um, a card maker or a scrapbooker and you just want a nice variety of colors that this is going to be fine for that the only the only person I think these wouldn't be that great for is if um, well if you like to mix colors I mean you can mix colors with these they mix fine um, but if you want to, if you're going to hang, if you want to paint work to hang on the wall, if you want to paint work to sell to people that will hang it on the wall, I probably would would pick and choose your colors. Don't buy a set. Just go to an art supply store or an art supply catalog and just very carefully choose your colors so you have optimal mixability and you have optimum light fastness. Um, this is kind of like, this is for fun. It's fun, quick, easy paint. Um, so it, that's, that's, you know, you're never going to find the perfect, one perfect paint is not going to be perfect for everyone, basically is what I'm saying. And I really prefer a really opaque gouache. I'm going to paint with gouache. I want opaque. And these don't quite cut it for me in the opacity, in the opacity range. But then again, painting with them, I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. I didn't feel like they weren't opaque enough to do a painting. So, ah, uh, they're fine. They're fine. They're not my favorite gouache, but, uh, but I don't think they're bad. And, um, if you have these already and you're thinking about buying the Anagani, I would say use these. They're, the, the Anagani is a step up, but not that much of a step up in my opinion. Some people might not say it's a step up, but that's for my preference. I like those better. Um, but if you're just working in a sketchbook or a coloring book or making some greeting cards that don't need to be light fast for you know years and years and years, I, I don't see any reason not to use these. I do think that a professional gouache like milliliter for milliliter will go a lot further but you pay a lot more. You pay a magnitude more for that equivalent amount of paint in a professional range. So, um, yeah, I, I think for what they are, they're excellent. I uh, hope you found this helpful. I will link my more in-depth review of this range of paint. I think I have a couple of them in the video description. So if you want to learn more or maybe see what other options are out there, maybe you don't want this many colors. Maybe you would prefer to have their older set that's got 24 colors. Maybe you would prefer... Uh, set with bigger pots of color because maybe you're a school teacher and you're doing these projects with kids and you need to have a lot of paint That's gonna be a better better option. Maybe you're like geez, Lindsay, you know what? I think I'll just buy the big pouches of paint and and make my own palettes or you know Because that's one thing like I can't imagine they use these in China. They use these with school children I cannot imagine cleaning up that mess because I teach watercolor to adults and the paint palettes, when we are done by the end of the night, are scary friends sometimes. Not always. This last group I had was pretty good. But sometimes the paint palettes, it's, oh, I have to plan a day to clean them. <laughs> but, yeah, I can just, like, you have to clean your brush in between colors. You're going to make a mess. So I, there must be some really disciplined art teachers and students over in China that are using these. Um, and, that, you know, they were just a customary supply over there. And somebody saw them and thought, hey, I bet... Americans will love these because aren't they cute? They're, they're, the quality's decent and they're fun to use and uh, new and novel and interesting. So if you've been curious about these, let me know what you think. I hope I satisfied your curiosity or maybe you want to go check them out further. I'll put a link in the video description to where you can buy these on Amazon. It is an affiliate link, so if you purchase it, I do earn a small commission. 
Um, and this was sent to me to review for free. If that thinks that if you think that clouds or biases my view at all, then absolutely factor that into your decision. I don't think it does, but I think you have the right to know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy product reviews. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!